Hello and welcome to this lesson about slope and rate of change. The learning target for this video is finding slope and rate of change uh, from points or on a graph. So first of all, let's talk about what is slope. Slope is a ratio of two things happening on a graph. And so it is the ratio of rise over run. And what that means is, you know, how far is a line going up or down versus how far it's going left or right. Um, and so that is what a slope is. And we have to understand that there are four types of slope. And the thing that we're going to have to work on developing is being able to connect the, like, the numbers with the pictures. Okay, and so right now we'll start off with the pictures. Um, one type of slope is a positive slope. And a positive slope is where it increases from left to right. Then the exact opposite of that will be a negative slope. And that's where it's decreasing from left to right. And so what we need to do is uh, uh, kind of make these associations with this picture and this word, this picture, this word, okay? Uh, and then we have two other slide, slopes. Um, one of them is zero. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then we have what is called undefined, which we often usually abbreviate as UND. Uh, and that's where it's a straight up a vertical line. Now, let's talk about why a zero slope is a zero slope and an undefined slope is an undefined slope. Well, it goes back to that ratio. Slope is the ratio of rise over run. How far something's going up and down versus left and right. Well, let's see how far this one's going up or down. Zero. And then how far is it going left or right? Who knows? It's some number. It could be whatever number we want it to be. But the thing is, zero divided by anything just equals zero. So that's why we call that a zero slope. And when we look at that ratio, it makes a little bit of sense how the number and the picture start to match up with one another. And we think about undefined, again, if we that ratio of rise over run, how far is it rising? Who knows? It's a variable amount. But how far is it running? How far is it going left or right? It's not. Try typing that into a calculator. And for A, you know, just let A equal 2. Your calculator is going to freak out on you. It's going to say error. It's going to say can't divide by zero. It's just going to freak out on you. And so that's because you're not allowed to divide by zero. And that's what's happening here. You're trying to divide by zero. And so that's why we call it an undefined slope. All right. And so one thing that we'll have to get good at is simply taking a look at a picture and to know right off the bat whether it's positive or negative. Uh, and so you see something like this, you have to make that association, that's a negative slope. You see something really steep like that, if it's increasing from left to right, it's positive. So the severity of it means nothing. I mean, it could be really flat like this, it's still positive. Likewise, you know, this could be like that sort of middle of the road for the negative one. Uh, we could go really shallow negative, we could go very steep negative. Uh, it doesn't matter where it crosses the x or y axis. Um, it's simply about the direction. If it's decreasing from left to right, it's negative. If it's increasing, it is positive. Now, the next thing we need to know, and this is a core idea, I'd say, is the formula for slope. And so, uh, why we call it m is beyond me, but we do. So, uh, slope is often referred to with the variable m. And it's the way you calculate it is you have to have two points and you take one of your points, the y coordinate, and you subtract the other y coordinate from it and you put that in the numerator. And then down in the denominator, you do x2 minus x1, where you subtract the x coordinates. And again, we think about what this means. This is calculating that difference in height where this is calculating the difference left to right. And so it's all about, again, that ratio of how far up over uh, how far you're going left to right. And so now let's take a look at some examples. 
And what's nice here is that again, we have sort of two types of problems. So two types of problems. Now, one is a lot of number crunching, but we'll talk about that in a second. We'll start off with the easier one. And the first one is what I like to call finger math. It's where you use your finger and you, whoops, finger, and it's where you count things. So for example, let's say we had this line right here. And we're told that this is at zero, three, and that this is four, seven. And we need to find the slope. Well, what we're going to use is finger math. Um, we're going to count how far up we go, how far over we go. And so you're just using your finger to make that count. Uh, and so to go from three to seven, you go up one, or so one, two, three, four, and then you go over one, two, three, four. And so for finding the uh, slope from a graph, you have to set a ratio and just count how far up, how far over, and if you can, you simplify it. Now the other thing that we have to do is we have to look at the direction. This is a positive slope because it's increasing from left to right. Let's change it up and just take a look at another example. Let's say we had something that looked like this right here, where again, this is at zero three, but now this one is at eight zero. We have to notice the direction of the line. The line is negative. So when I set my ratio, I'm going to put a negative sign next to it. And so then I'm just going to count how far up and down I'm going, which is I'm going one, two, three units. And then how far am I going left or right? Well, this point is eight zero, so I'd have to count over eight spots. And my slope is now going to be negative three over eight. And again, it's negative because it's going this general direction. Now, that's the easy example. The harder type of problem, it's not really harder, it's just more tedious, is the number crunching. And so that's where you're going to be given a set of points. And so let's just say we're given the points for 1 and let's say 8, 5. Actually, let's not go 8, 5. Let's go 8, 7. There we go. Um, and we have to then use the slope formula. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's just number crunching. And you have to remember, you know, what's an X, what's a Y in your ordered pair, and you just have to be consistent. So whatever one you pick to be one or two, you got to stick with it all the way through the problem. So here, I'll get seven minus one over eight minus four. I take my Y's and I subtract them. I take my X's and I subtract them in the same order. And so here I'll end up getting six over four, which is three over two. So you're gonna to wanna to reduce it if you can. And so this is finger math, but with number crunching. If, the, if we saw these on a coordinate plane, you could count it out, but we don't have a coordinate plane. We're just given the raw points. We actually have to crunch the numbers. Let's do another, we'll do a couple more examples of this. So this time, let's say we have something like negative uh, three, negative two, and we have uh, four, five. So we have to be care, or we have to take care of, of the negative signs and just be really careful when plugging them in. So still going to use the same formula. I'm going to take my y's and I'm going to subtract them. So I'll go 5 minus negative 2 over 4 minus negative 3. This will give me 7 over 7, which is equal to 1. Let's do another example. This time, let's say we have 1 comma 1 and we have five, negative three. So same process, take the y's, negative three minus one over five minus one. Now here we end up getting negative 
4 over positive 4. This gives us a negative 1 for our slope. And that's fine. We've got to keep in mind it's okay to be negative, and so we can have a negative sign there. And all that means is that when you graph it, it's going to look something like that. The line's going to go down like that. All right, then the other thing you got to watch out for is when you end up getting um, uh, zero or undefined. So let's say you had something like 5, 8, and 5, 12, and you want to find the um, slope of that line. Well, you set it up, 12 minus 8 over 5 minus 5, and you get 4 over 0. Right here, you have to have a bell that goes off in your head anytime you see a zero after you've crunched some numbers. And you gotta think, all right, well, what does this mean? Can you divide by zero? Well, so keep in mind, like, this could be rewritten as four divided by zero, and hopefully you remember when you learned multiplication and division, that's a big no-no, and so we would just say it's undefined. But we take these same numbers, and we flip things around, and we say eight, five, and 12, Eight. What we end up getting now is uh, twelve five. I mean, um, we'll get five minus five over twelve minus eight, which is going to equal zero over four. Zero divided by anything is zero, and that's totally fine. So you just got to watch out for that because that's what I can do to make these things more difficult. Just to occasionally throw in a uh, or throw in a zero but making sure you know where it is. And if it's in the denominator, it's undefined. If it's in the numerator, it is um, uh, zero. Now, the final thing we need to talk about, rate of change. So rate of change is fancy for slope in word problems. So what you have to do is, when you read a word problem, is extract a couple of points. Extract an x, y, and then extract another x, y. But the other thing you might see in a rate of change is for unconventional graphs. And so you may have something that looks like this. And what they're gonna, what they might ask for is like, let's say these represent months or something like that. So this is the first month, this is the second month, and then here we have the third month. Um, and they would ask for what's the rate of change from one to two? or maybe from one to three overall. And so it's the same concept, the same idea. It's just that when we're doing with, dealing with slope, we're dealing with a constant rate of change. And so slopes might look something like this, where it's just gonna be a nice straight line. But if you wanna apply the same principle of a slope to an unconventional graph like this one, we call it rate of change. So rate of change is to go from you know like this point to that point, but here we would just call it slope. So the concept is the same. You do the same idea. You just take, you can do finger math for this. You know how far down have you gone or how far up have you gone versus how far you've gone left or right. Um, or you could extract points from these and crunch numbers using the slope formula. So rate of change, again, it's just slope and word problems or unconventional graphs. So good luck with your homework and practice and let me know if you have any questions.